Hello and welcome to Made for More. I am your host, Holly J. Moore. This is where we give you all the tools to show up tomorrow as a better version of yourself than you showed up today. I am here with the Robin Quivers to my Howard Stern, Aaron Bender. <laughs> I just laugh at everything. It's what I'm supposed to do. It's well, in the job description. That's why you're here. That's why you're yes. here. I laugh and edit video. Yes. I yes. don't know which one I'm better at, but that's okay. You're good at all the things. That's okay. So <laughs> we have Frank Ortega on today. Yes. Huge transformation. Yeah. And it divorce. That's yeah. that's his thing. That's of course that's recovering your from divorce. Thing. Divorce isn't his thing, Aaron. <laughs> recovering, <laughs> recovering from, from divorce. Divorce. And, yes. and and you know, coaching you to be your best self through yeah. one of the worst times in your life. But to get divorced, you first must get married. Well, yes, that's true. Yes. <laughs> that's an excellent point. And yes, that's thank what you, I'm Captain planning Obvious. to do because I have a little announcement of my own. Oh, let's yes. hear it. Let's hear it. Engaged. Woo! Engaged. Congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, Valentine's night. Uh, wow. Made dinner for the family. I have two kids. Abby has two kids. I think we've talked about it uh, briefly on the uh, on the podcast before. Yes. But uh, made dinner for everybody, got down on one knee before we went to mass and proposed. Wow. All the kids were taking video on their devices. Oh, I love because they that. Because can't, they can't be without their devices. Of course, Can they, yes. Can they no. Maddie? Yes. <laughs> yes. We, have a, we have a guest in studio My today. My assistant is here. <laughs> yes. But I, I'm curious, though, how did Jeff propose? Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, you know, this has taken it way back. <laughs> um, let's see. How did Jeff propose? We... Um, he wanted to take me to the beach, to Newport Beach. And, I mean, I think ultimately his plan was to propose at sunset, you yeah. know, just as the sun is, like, you know, coming down on the water. But there was traffic. <laughs> and he is so mellow. He never gets his feathers ruffled. Yeah. And he's, like, freaking out when we're sitting in traffic. And I'm like, what is going on? What is the deal? But obviously it was because we had to get there in the perfect timing, yes. you know, for the perfect proposal. But, you know, things do not always go according to plan. Yeah, and you adapt. You adapt. You, adapt. you kind of have to accept that plan A is not quite working. Absolutely. Let's go to plan B. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and I think Frank is such a beautiful story of how he made – plan B, you know, after getting a divorce, he made that into such a beautiful existence. And I'm really excited to to hear how exactly how he got there. Um, Cause it's not easy, but you know, if you put in the work and you um, just kind of accept it, then I think it can be something really beautiful. All right. Today, as we know, I'm very excited to have joining us Frank Ortega, a divorce recovery coach. Frank, thank you so much for being here. Of course, Holly. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a long time coming, I feel like. It has. You know, we, we actually haven't really had the opportunity to to actually talk. I've been following you on Instagram for a while, and I'm just super impressed with your content. It's so inspiring. It's so encouraging, particularly to, to my tribe of people that, you know, are going through hard things, particularly divorce. So it's really just such a pleasure to finally get the opportunity to to chat with you. Yeah, it's a pleasure getting to chat with you because I've seen your stuff too. And I love that, you know, we got individuals like myself and you also train people, it sounds like, on your content. You really do help with mindset a lot, right? Uh, and I do. That and then like the tactical things legally is what also huge, huge, huge. So I'm so excited to meet you and, and get to know you a little bit more too on this. Awesome, awesome. Well, so let's let's kind of jump into to the meat and potatoes of what you do. Can you tell us like tell us about your work? Tell us what you do. Yeah, so I am first of all, you know, my name is Frank Ortega and I am a man of presence that walks in integrity, honor and courage. Uh, I'm a chain breaker and a legacy maker and I am a son of the living God. Uh, that is who I am and really what I do, right? And so I, what I help individuals do is I help them break chains, generational chains that are holding them back, right, and potentially creating generational chains. I help break that stuff off, yeah. and then I help them build actual legacy because I do not believe that legacy is something that you leave. I believe that legacy is something that you live. And so I help take people out of a mindset where they're just surviving and flip everything that the enemy meant for evil 
so that God can start using it for good in their life. And I know that that just sounds really good and it's something that we probably hear in church a lot. And so I use very practical and tactical tools to help people actually create those breakthroughs in their mindset, right? And then also connect it to their spirit. So then the results that they get just kind of become automatic. Uh, and so really I help people experience life on their terms. Dang, that that is so profound. And like, I mean, the whole intention of this podcast made for more, you know, every day in the intro, when we shoot an episode, I say like, we want to help you not just survive, but thrive. So Come on. this is why I wanted you on the podcast so bad. And I love the fact that it sounds like you are so intentional about how you live. And I think we both probably agree on absolutely how critical mindset is to everything. Yeah. But have you always been this way? I mean, you've gone through some pretty, pretty hard stuff too, right? You've been divorced, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I can't say that I've always been this way, um, but I can. So this is how I like to frame it, right? So God designed me to be this way, right? Like God designed every individual to be more than a conqueror because the Bible's very clear and it says that you are the head, not the tail. And it says that the devil is beneath your feet. So I'm not this type of dude who's just like, well, you know, the devil's out to get me. He might be out to get me, but I'm stomping on his face every step <laughs> I take, right? That's yes. just my mentality. <laughs> and so that's who God designed me to be. Right. And so it's not that I haven't always been this person. It's that from childhood to adulthood, I started to lose that identity because I was born with that identity. I was born number one. Right. right. You know, not to get too graphic, but when my, my mom and my dad did the did the thing that they do <laughs> to produce a child. Right. It's like immediately there was already a race to begin with. And guess who won? Hello. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. I won. Yeah. yeah. Out of <laughs> Out of trillions, out of trillions. That's, so that is an excellent from the point moment break, yes. that I was like literally brought into my mother's womb, I was already more than a conqueror. I was already a winner, <sighs> right? And so it's not that like, oh, I wasn't always this version of me. It's that I lost that because as a kid, you're not really taught how to navigate through pain and through trials, which is something I'm super intentional with my daughter now so that she can step into her actual identity that she was born as from the very beginning early on. Does that make sense? That makes a ton of sense. Yes. I've never really thought about how, you know, all of us that were born, like we are born winners, but yeah, I agree. I mean, so many people just kind of go through life on autopilot. They are just surviving. That's all they can mm -hmm. do um, because they don't have the tools. They haven't been taught. They don't have the resources. They don't know how to get there. So yeah. tell me, you went from, you know, you were born a winner. You were the winning sperm. <laughs> and you were born a winner. <laughs> Holla. Um, and... <laughs> But then you, you know, we all lose that along the way. Life, yeah. you know, life can toss you around a bit. Plus, again, I think it's it's not natural. It's not normalized to to teach people, especially in this day and age. You know, we coddle the American mind. Um, and mm -hmm. so rather than really teaching people how to work through pain and trauma and like do the work, right, we just kind of coddle people through it. And we want to make them feel warm and fuzzy and we, we want to make them feel good. Um, yeah. so how did you make the transformation? How did you get back to this self of like, and this mindset of like, I am a winner. I, you know, all the things that you're so intentional about now, how walk me through, like, how did you do that? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think, first of all, I don't think we all want to coddle people and make them feel warm and fuzzy. I think that's okay. just what people always want and they run to, right? Yes. And you it's know, easy. it's comfortable. Exactly. And what one of my coaches said this, he said, there's a time for hugs and there's a time to hit them in the face. You know, <laughs> the, the problem yes. is that most people think that a hug is just going to help fix everything, but that's not mm -hmm. how I stepped back into who I actually was designed to be. Right. right. So the yeah. journey really started. I would say my journey started at 18 years old, whenever I knocked up my baby mama. Right. Okay. And 
through like a bunch of series. By the way, I keep things very real, so I hope that's okay with you guys. I love it. I love it. Keep it <laughs> real. My, yes. Yeah. That's the and, only uh, way. I just feel like it, you connect more, right? Like I never connected yeah. with like the perfect pastors preaching from the stage. I, no. I connected with the imperfect human, right? Because Absolutely. that's what actually gives glory to God, not our perfection, but our imperfections. And so mm-hmm. at about 18 years old, right, that incident happened, right? And then we go through a series of events where um, essentially she kept me away from my daughter. And so my daughter was actually born four months premature and I wasn't able to get into the hospital. So I remember going to the hospital. Now, keep in mind, like, you know, I wasn't I wasn't doing drugs. I wasn't an abusive person. Uh, I wasn't any of those things. It's just uh, that there was just an agenda going on on that side of the household for some reason. And so yeah. and they wanted control. I'm very familiar which, with that agenda. Yeah, I, I was going to say a divorce I mean, lawyer. Yeah, it, literally, you probably hear this a lot. Right. And so. Yes. um. And, and, it, so and by was, the way, it, it's tragic when when yeah. parents do that to the other parent. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But what I'm realizing, it's because every human wants control, even if it costs your character, even if it costs the fulfillment of your future. Every person, mo- more than likely, if they want security, right, they want control because they feel certain in if I can control it. Now I got some level of certainty, right? So I know that was the driving factor, but I find out that my daughter is born through an outside source. And so I find out what hospital she's in. I go there, I go to see her. I'm like, Hey, my name is Francisco Ortega. I'm here to see my daughter, Tatiana Ortega. They're like, we don't have a Tatiana Ortega. I was like, well, okay. What about a Tatiana Rodriguez? Right. And then they were like, Oh yeah, yeah. But who you're, you're the father. I was like, yeah. They were like, well, we don't have you on the birth certificate as the father. So you're going to have to go get like approval. So I go to get approval from, from the, the room. And as soon as I knock and they open the door and I had my mom with me, my dad with me, my sweet, precious aunt from Mexico, who's just like so quiet, timid and small. Right. <laughs> and then my brother with me. And so we knock on the door. My, uh, my ex's mom opens the door, flips a lid. And I'm like, dude, I just want to see my kid. And she's like, well, that's my kid laying on that bed over there. I was like, and that's my kid in the NICU that I don't know what the heck is going on, right? So Uh, needless to say, they started screaming security when I didn't do anything. It's just like, it's stupid, like overreaction. It's people with, you know, that really, I hope God works on like people's emotional intelligence. And I hope that people do the work to develop that because these are just situations that don't need to happen. And um, so very quickly, what ended up happening was I lost control of everything. I didn't get to meet my daughter until she was one. You fast wow. forward. Yeah, you fast forward, and me and my ex end up getting married years later, like four years later. And I'll never forget oh. a conversation that she had with me. She was like crying, and she was like, I can't believe you humiliated me and made me do a DNA test. And this is when I knew something was incredibly wrong. I was like, you realize that you guys forced me to do a paternity test because I needed to prove that I was the dad. I'm like, yeah. so yeah. the fact that you feel like I did this to you when I just was doing it because you forced me to so I could see my kid, it was just like, I, I couldn't understand it. But I say those right. things to say, like, I say those things to lay context to how little of control I had, right? right. For a year, my daughter's in the NICU. I hear that she's having heart surgery. I hear that she's having lung surgery. I don't know if she's going to make it. I'm hearing this from other people around me. I, I'm doing stuff through the attorneys, right? Because you got to give God yeah. something to work with. You can't just sit there and pray and believe that something's going to happen, but never take any <laughs> right. action. It's ridiculous, right. right? And so I do those things and I have zero control, zero, zero control. It's completely yeah. out of my hands. And what right. started happening in that season is I started realizing when things are completely out of my hands, it's no longer about who I am anymore. Right. You got a lot of these coaches out here, great coaches, but it's to me, it's so surface level where they just work on your identity. Hey, you got to know who you are. It starts with identity. Well, I believe it goes deeper than that. It starts before that. And this is what this journey took me on. It took me from, okay, okay, who am I? Who's Frank Ortega? And I told you guys who I am. I'm a man of presence that walks in integrity, honor, and courage. Right. Like that is who Frank Ortega is. I know my identity. 
But it wasn't until I started realizing whose I am. So everyone stops at who I am. But then I started realizing, okay, whose am I? Whose kid am I? Who's my actual father? Who's got my back? Who's my crew that I run with? I got a legion of angels, heaven's angels behind me, right? And we're rolling yeah. deep. That's who <laughs> I am. That's who I belong to, right? Yeah. But then I realize it doesn't stop there. It actually goes deeper than that. If you actually want to really step into your true identity, you got to understand who he is. And so mm-hmm. I went through a journey of not having any control, not getting the outcomes that I wanted when I wanted them. I got the outcomes that I wanted, but not when I wanted them. And okay. it took me on a journey of figuring out, wow, uh, God is actually good. And that didn't just happen like by accident. I, I didn't just trip into finding out that God is good, which is I feel most people expect it. I had to dig I had to search. Isaiah chapter 46, it says that God has hidden treasures for us in the darkness. Guess what? I was in the middle of the darkness, and there was hidden treasures there. So I had people telling me, hey, man, don't worry. Joy comes in the morning. I was like, bro, F that. I don't got till the morning, man. (laughs) There is no morning. It's all dark. (laughs) It's pitch black, bro. There's not a moon. There's not (laughs) stars. There's nothing out here for me. And so I had to go on a journey. Had to right? Had to. I gave myself no other option. I had to grab God by the hand and say, hey, can we figure this thing out? Show me where my blessings are, man. Show me how I can not just survive through the night, but show me how I can find these hidden treasures, stack them up so that when joy does come in, you know what, what that actually means to me? This is a revelation I had. When the morning comes, I get to walk out with all these treasures that I found that were hidden in the darkness. That me and my daddy in heaven searched out and found together. I get to walk out with these treasures. Now, Holly, what makes you feel more better when someone gives you a gift or when you give somebody else a gift that lights them up? When you give someone else a gift. That's that's joy. That's joy. So you know how true joy comes in the morning? When you walk out of that night season, that dark season, and you got these treasures that you, I mean, you went through hell and high water with God to find and now guess what you show up in the morning and you get to give these to people and say oh sweetheart look this is what i found hey dad look man this is what i found through the hardest season of my life hey look man of god this is what i found through the hardest season hey man i want to give you this right and that's all i'm doing right now right like on social media all i'm doing is just i'm just giving away the hidden treasures that i found right and so i say that to say how i stepped into this version of myself, the true identity that I have was through losing control. And instead of fighting it, it was giving myself to it. And instead of saying, wow, life is just knocking me down on my knees. It was saying, wow, knock life is just knocking me down on my knees. And it's forcing me to get into a posture to actually connect with my heavenly father. It's different. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. So I just made the choice that I wasn't going to lay it down and die. I made the choice that I'm going to use everything in my life. And that started at age 19. Yeah. So I think you really, you know, you're really on to something, Frank, with this whole control thing. Because what I find, you know, kind of looking at the more practical aspects of going through a divorce, we represent more men than women. So, you know, I'm talking to a lot of men every day who are in the thick of it. They're in the darkness. They're in the divorce process. And they are so, oftentimes, they're so frustrated. They're frustrated Mm. at the process. They're frustrated how long it's taking. They're frustrated how expensive it is. They're frustrated that it seems like wife has all the control. Why is wife's attorney doing this? Why is the judge doing that? And I really, I mean, you have really, I think, hit the nail on the head that it is a lack of control. Yeah. So, but, you know, just from talking to you, like, it sounds like you really have a beautiful gift of faith and not everybody has that kind of faith you know whether they want to or not I mean I think some people just have the gift of just having a lot of faith others need something more tangible some even though maybe they do believe in a higher power they do believe in God but maybe they they struggle with like having that kind of faith where and I very much relate to this because you know 
in conversations I've had with people who maybe were, you know, having a disagreement or an argument or a friendly debate about, you know, the existence of God or something like that. I mean, my go-to is like, guys, it's selfish. Like I just cling to it when things are going really bad, you know, like maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but it helps me, you know? So I think some people are more inclined to be able to cling to their faith than others. So what do you tell people who don't necessarily have the gift of faith, or maybe they don't, they actually don't have faith. Maybe they don't believe in God. Maybe, you know, Mm -hmm. they're in a different place mentally, spiritually. Like what do you tell those people to make it through these super dark times? Yeah, that's really good question. So just so everybody knows, like I've helped people from all sorts of religions or not religions, yeah. right? Like right. one of my be- one of my best clients that had like she had the fastest turnaround. Um she had no faith whatsoever. Actually, she was coming out of a throuple with two women, oh. right? And so completely oh. different dynamic, right? But here's the thing, just because you don't believe in God doesn't mean God doesn't believe in you. And just because you don't believe in the Bible, it doesn't mean that the principles that are in here aren't true. And science is just now starting to prove this thing right, not wrong, right. So I'm not just a faith guy, right? I am a faith guy, but I'm a very practical dude, okay? Like Mm -hmm. as a man, you don't just need a good emotion. You need some tactical steps. That's what I've realized. And so- I got very frustrated listening to sermons where people were like, you know, you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, how the heck do I do that then? (laughs) Don't just tell tell me that. Hey, man, you got to take every thought captive and make it submissive to Christ. Well, how the heck do I do that, bro? Like you're preaching it with a lot of excitement, but you're not teaching me how to do it, right? And so what ended up happening was I learned about the reticular activating system in our brain. If people don't know what this is, it is the superpower that runs everything and controls your perception of reality, period. Okay. Right? Like how many, how many times have your, uh, like, I remember my dad when I was a little kid, right? Uh, We were were working on 18 wheelers with my dad since I was like six years old. And I just remember not wanting to do it. And so he would ask me to go find a tool. And so when I would go and look for the tool, I had just the crappiest attitude of like, dude, I don't even know where it is, this and this and that, right? So when I go look for the tool, I can't find the flipping tool. (laughs) It's like nowhere to be found. And I just remember my dad being like, bro, if I find it, man, man. I'm going to kick your (laughs) rear end. Right, yeah. I'm sure you can guess what happened. He found it. You found it. You found it. Yes. Yes. It was right in front of my face and I could not see it. Why yes. couldn't I see it? Because of the information I was giving the reticular activating system in my brain. I was mm-hmm. telling it not to find it. Why? Because I didn't want to find it without right. even knowing it. And so right. it's the power of the questions that we begin to ask. I can, like, there's one of my clients, man, she's phenomenal. She's been with me now for like two years. She does not want to leave completely over her divorce. <laughs> they literally forced me to like create a life after divorce oh mastermind just so that okay. they could continue to like do life with me. Right. Yes. So, I love that. So she, I will never forget. She comes onto this call. Her name is Pauline and she's just like, crippled and bawling and I'm like girl what is going on she's like I just I feel so like insecure and worthless because I've gained like god knows how many pounds and I just I don't have any help I don't this and that da, 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 da. so she felt so defeated okay in 30 seconds all the people that were on that call till this day they remember that moment in 30 seconds I took her from feeling completely defeated to where I'm not a fitness coach, but now she's down something crazy, like 90 something pounds in like the past year, right? And it was from this one 30 second increment because I had her ask a different question. In other words, I got her reticular activating system to look for different answers. Mm. So it unlocked her world. This is why the Bible says that if you seek me and you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Right. Okay. This is why some of yeah. the people that you work with, probably they they thought that the person was cheating. They imagined that the person was cheating and they found evidence to prove that they were cheating, but maybe they weren't cheating. Right. And yes. then they pushed them away even more. Right. Yes. And so what you're yes. looking for, you're going to find because the right. reticular activating system, it emphasizes, it generalizes and it deletes. So what does that mean? Yeah. Anything you're looking for, it will magnify it 
for you. Man, life right. sucks. Oh, you better be careful saying that. That's why the Bible says yeah. there's power in the tongue. Because when you say that, the scientific part of you, the reticular activating system goes to work and it goes, let's give him all the evidence that life sucks because that's what our master's looking for. So we got to right. get to work and show him that. Yes. Then it'll generalize. If something might mean that life sucks, your brain will just throw it in there. See, life right. does suck, yeah. bro. Your boy didn't yeah. invite you on that trip. Right. Yeah. So, so I tell my kids sucks. all the time, words matter, like words matter. Yeah. And as you know, I'm a lawyer, so maybe we talk in different terms, but I think it's the same thing. But I tell, you mm -hmm. know, this is what I call confirmation bias. Like yeah. you're looking for things to confirm the theory that you already have. Yep. And so I think that's so true. You know, if you want to, you know, in kind of like speaking to my clients, my, my people, it's like, if you're, if you're looking how the judge is so biased, the judge is always going to rule <laughs> in, in so-and-so's favor. Like you yeah. will find that. But Absolutely. you can choose to look at it a different way, I think is what you're saying. Like you can choose, I love it. You, you, what you're looking for, you will find. And so you can choose yep. to find something different. Abs absolutely. That's really profound. Because then the last yeah. thing that the reticular activating system does is it deletes. So right. anything that doesn't fit what you're searching for is gone. That's why that just tool, goes away. I couldn't yeah. find it. You don't see with your right. eyes. You see with your eyes, but you perceive with your mind, right? Right. And so it's all about what you're asking and what you're wanting to look for, right? Which is why yeah. the people who don't have faith, I just walk them through some very simple exercises and I get them to ask very specific questions that lead them. I think the best coaches in the world are the coaches that teach you how to become your own coach instead of making you rely on me. First of all, I don't right. want to be with 10 people a day. Sorry, that's just not what I'm interested in. I feel like I, I can right. be so much more useful in so many other ways, right? But if I can teach you how to go to the source, right, and find those answers for yourself, I believe that's the yeah. best coaches in the world, right? And so that's what I teach people right. to do. So people that don't have faith, that's absolutely okay because I'm still going to use this thing. I'm just going <laughs> to simplify it in a very practical and scientific way for you that has backing to it now that's going to get yeah. you the same flipping results, right? Right. And so yeah. that's how I help people that don't have faith. Yeah, okay. So I think, um, you know, because we talk to a lot of people who come in um, to talk to us and they're like, we just want to know – we just want to know our rights, you know, but, and it's like, they're contemplating a divorce, but they, mm -hmm. a lot of, in a lot of cases, they end up not going through with the divorce, even though they will tell us the most horrific things. They're in a terrible situation. They're miserable. They're unhappy. They're this, that, the other. And I think a lot of it is because there is shame around divorce and they, they would rather like stay in a situation that they know is toxic. They know it's not helping them be the best version of themselves. They know it's crippling them in so many different ways, spiritually, emotionally, all these things. But because of the shame, they will stay. Um, mm -hmm. What do you tell those people? How do they get over yeah. the shame? So I deal with this a lot because I help a lot of Christians too, you know? And right. I think they, in that community particularly, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a hurdle that they have to overcome. Exactly. And so... Something that I always, the first thing I always encourage people to do is to stop being a liar. It's the first thing that I encourage them to do, okay? And this is what I mean by that, is more than likely in this marriage, you have shown up in a manipulative way to try and get them to be the way that you want them to be and to try and get the outcomes that you want. That is why when they have done something that bothered you, you didn't bring it up. When you have a desire that you want to pursue, you didn't bring it up because you would rather keep temporary peace than to experience long-term fulfillment. So what's happened right. now? Now we've denied ourselves and shown up as liars. I mean, the simplest way to put it, no one likes hearing that, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Is and the, the only truth. reason I know that is because that was freaking me, dude. <laughs> like, I know right. the game. I was married. Yeah. I've been in relationships. I know that, hey, if I say this, uh, it might lead to turmoil. 
ah, I just want turmoil. I don't want that. So I'm just going to hold peace. that to myself. Exactly. And it's stupid to me. Like people that believe yeah. that, you know, you're supposed to get someone that just brings you peace. The point of family is growth, not peace. Right. And growth happens when iron begins to sharpen iron. Growth happens when there's pruning. Growth doesn't happen right. when you're just comforting all the freaking time, right? Which is why, yeah. like, I'm not a very... You know, what What do you say? Like, uh, dudes aren't naturally just drawn to work with me when they're going through a divorce because I'm not just going to cradle you and coddle you, bro. Right. Yeah. I'm going to challenge you. If you want to just be right. coddled and like made feel good, go talk to a therapist that isn't really allowed to challenge you because of specific right. like r rules that they got to follow. Right. I'm like, yeah. go to yeah. that, man. But if you right. really want growth, then the only way I grew whenever I was doing jujitsu and Muay Thai, it was not by people rubbing my back telling me how good I was. It was by me <laughs> getting in the ring and throwing down and blood coming out of my nose and learning, oh, snap, this is how you block that punch. This is how you block a liver kick. This is how you throw and counter. Right. It's being in the middle of it. Yes, I, <laughs> I totally agree with that. Um, you know, I mean, I remember as a little girl, like my dad always telling me nothing good comes easy. And I think that's just like that concept in the most simple of forms. Like yeah. it's anything good in your life. Like when you look back, it came, it was born out of terrible circumstances or a lot of work, a suffering adversity, and you had to overcome it. And that's when really like the growth occurs. Um, yeah. but you say something on your social media, on your Instagram, you say something that I think is just like really, um, I mean, it was, it was shocking to read because I think it is so rare for someone to be this highly evolved, um, and, and be this self-aware, but you say, and also take this much personal responsibility. I mean, hey, I try to live my life with too like, much credit, man. You're making me sound like an <laughs> angel, man. I'm just the mess. Well, I mean, thing. <laughs> yes, you are an imperfect human like the rest of us, but one that, of the though. things you said on Instagram is you talk about how your wife left you and you don't blame her because you weren't being a man she should have stayed for. How? Frank Ortega, did you get to that point where you made that realization and you are like okay with admitting that? I mean, I think that is just like shocking in the best possible way, but like yeah. how did you get to that place? I, uh, I'll never forget actually the moment that that happened. It was when I still lived here on the same location, but I had my mobile home. And it was the mobile home that I grew up in and it was the mobile home that like me and her lived in. And I was on a, this black leather couch that uh, Sofia Vergata, it's like her series. Uh, and I was sitting there in my mm -hmm. uh, American uh, boxer briefs with a white <laughs> hoodie. And I just remember I was tired of suffering so much. And I remembered this verse where King David said, Father, would you shine your light on the dark areas of my heart? So I started asking, I was like, God, can you show me the things that I can't see, man? You know what that did? Prayer's powerful. But I also engaged yeah. my reticular activating system, and it went to work. It went to work for me. Can you show me the areas where I fell short? Can you show me the areas where I need to grow in? Right? Because the yeah. fact of the matter is, I don't think it really matters who you are. If you're showing up at, as like, in a one position and you're just killing the game no one's going to want to leave you they're going to try and do whatever they can to try and stay <laughs> in your life right, right? and so if someone yeah. chose to let leave like whether we want to believe it or not man it's because we were showing up in the type of way in these areas right like i know I'm, i got a huge mexican family we got over 120 family members just in this area alone right right oh, like that sounds fun <laughs> Yeah, the whole street I live in, it's called Melody Lane, but we call it Mexican Lane because my whole family <laughs> has just, like, taken over it. And um, okay. on, on Christmas, certain family members take certain things to eat. And I remember when one aunt moved to Mexico, right, and she was no longer at our family Christmases, and she made the best what we called Chile Colorado that I've ever okay. had. So freaking good. And guess what? 
I noticed when she was gone. I noticed when she was gone mm-hmm. because of what she brought to the table. Yeah. And the so value. for me, it was, God, what am I not bringing to the table? What am I not bringing to the table? What was I not bringing? How could I? And then I start seeing it all and it was painful. And I just remember buckling down and just bawling and just being like, God, like, I don't want to be that type of man anymore. But the first step to transformation is awareness. And so it was gaining that awareness and then just like not holding it against them anymore. And that gave me the freedom to like step into like who I am today and become an individual that I'm extremely proud of who I am. Like I I really am. And that self ownership is what got me the freedom instead of like giving her the keys to my handcuffs, waiting for her to tell me like, Hey, no, you were this or no, I shouldn't have that. No, 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 no. You should have left, dude. You should have. I was pretty darn pathetic in that season, right? Like I wasn't (laughs) showing up in this specific way. All I was, was a provider, dude. I didn't lead you spiritually didn't even know how to hold space emotionally, had no idea on how to build and create attraction and what really mattered, didn't have established core values for me, much less my family, had zero vision for we were going to go. Why would I expect you to stay? You see what I'm saying? It's like if A business owner didn't know where the company was going. Their payroll was terrible. HR was terrible. They didn't have all these areas, but they're like, hey, but but we're paying you weekly. And you expect to be like crazy loyal to you? That's not going to happen. And so it came through me literally just spending time with God and just really wanting genuine answers, even if they hurt. And I think people say, like, I just want some answers. But what they really want is they want answers that will make them feel better, not answers that are actually going to help them grow. Right. Because growth is painful. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. not easy. It's painful. It's hard. It's it is not fun, but But it's it's so so worth it. Right. It's so rewarding. It's like, yeah, when you go to the gym, it's painful. But when your chest looks like a one. (laughs) <laughs> it's so rewarding. And guess right. what you do? You, your relationship with pain changes. Right. It's, it's no yeah. longer, ah, I don't want to go do it. Now it's, dude, there's a massive reward to this, right? Yes. Which is why I try and be so public about like my life and like the things that I'm doing right now. Because I'm yes. like, dude, I want to be a picture of possibility for a dude specifically that might be faith-based that, was extremely suicidal after the divorce that lost their business that couldn't keep their light bills turned on or their water bill turned on. I want to see what I want to show you what's possible in less than five years. If you give men something to respect and you show up giving God something to work with, I want to show you what's possible. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but I'll tell you what, I didn't have anybody. And now I've created like this incredible community of individuals that they're not going to let you doubt yourself. They're not going to let you just weep and wallow. They're going to speak life into you. And you know what starts happening when you're around a lot of individuals that are just killing it in the game after divorce? It starts creating this hope in you where you're like, huh, maybe that's possible for me. Maybe that's possible. Because this person, I'm hearing them talk about what they just went through six months ago. Right. And now they're here. Yeah. yeah. Maybe so that maybe I that's that. definitely right. That's definitely something that I I wanted to go through with you because one of your posts on Instagram is like, you know, I don't know if it was maybe when your marriage was ending or right after your divorce, it was like, you know, you kind of list all the things that were present in your life at that time and it was like all bad things. And then you're it was like then and now and it's like then you list all the things in your life now and it's like you are on fire for God. You're on fire for your life. You like a really, you know, you can just see just through your social media presence, like the transformation that has happened. But so do you think that transformation would have happened without sort of going through that darkness of your divorce? I think it could have. Okay. But it would have had to have been through darkness anyways. Right. Okay. And so because I was unwilling to go to war in my marriage, in other words, be 100% transparent and stop avoiding the turmoil, 
because wow. I was not willing to go through that dark period, mm -hmm. I had to go through another dark period. So I right. think it could have happened either way, right? It's just choose your darkness, choose your darkness, right? right? right. Like, yeah. My, my mentor yeah. quotes his spiritual father all the time, and he's like, being overweight is hard. Getting in shape is hard. Being broke is hard. Yeah. Becoming Choose a millionaire is hard. Having no faith is hard. Having faith is hard. Like, all yeah. these things are hard. All of it is darkness, right? And I don't know why people, right. like, my, my vision is to change the statistics of divorced men leading suicide rates. So in order to do that, what I really desire is I desire for us as men to change our relationship that we have with dark times. Everybody is yeah. so scared of dark times. Right. But yes, the best miracle that ever happened in eternity was Jesus coming back from the dead. Yeah. It didn't happen in a light room. Right. It happened in darkness. <laughs> yes. The yeah. way, even if you don't believe in that and you just believe in the big bang, okay? So yeah. now I'll hit for the okay. people who are the complete opposite. If you just believe yeah. in the Big Bang, hey, guess what? All the beauty you see around, you know where it started? <laughs> darkness. Darkness, yeah. Didn't start with yeah. light. It all right. started with darkness. And so if we can shift our perspective and, our, and change our relationship with darkness, I think the next time you go through a hard season, you're going to have a response like, this is my boy, Kevin. Uh, he went through the yeah. program last year. I get a message from him today. He said, I got my ex talking court now, but I'm not worried at all. God is so good. I'm never leaving that mindset again. You know why? He doesn't that. fear darkness anymore. Right. He's like, yeah. oh, you're going to take me into a dark season? That's okay, because there's going to be hidden yeah. treasures there. There's going right? to be hidden treasures. Absolutely. So why would yeah. I be afraid of something that's going to bring treasure to my life? Yeah, we should welcome it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I believe that. it would have happened either way. It's just which path of darkness would did I choose and or right. did I not choose? And unfortunately, life had to throw it at me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Frank, this is so fascinating. I am getting the signal from my producer, wrap it up. But like this conversation has been so awesome. Um, I would love to talk to you more. Well, maybe we'll have you on for part two. Um, but tell us what, if people are interested in working with you. I mean, per, I think... I think kind of your niche is like men going through divorce. Is that correct? Yeah, men, men and women. Okay, mm -hmm. men and women. Okay, so tell tell the people where they can find you. How can they um, find out more about you? How could they work with you? Yeah, the best place to reach me is on Instagram. Just go to at divorced recovery coach. Uh, and if you're coming from here, just message me, Holly. Uh, and then we can chat about what that looks like. I have a process to actually like working with me, right? Uh, because I, I only work with individuals who are actually ready to do the work and don't just want to vent about things. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not here right. to like vent to, right? Um, right? I want you to get freedom. And so if yeah. people are serious about that, message me, Holly. We'll chat. want to hear a little bit about your story, things like that. Uh, and I believe, man, I believe that you can get the results right? Like it doesn't matter what gym yeah. you go to. It matters who's using that gym, right? Yeah. Like the gym works for everyone, but there's a dude that goes in with right. next level intention that can get jacked in 90 days. And there's right. a dude that's just there trying to like, just kind of check off the boxes and he's not going to get in shape until like 12 months. So it really just right. depends on the individual. So at divorced recovery coach on Instagram is going to be the best way to get in contact with me. Perfect. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you for being here today. And also thank you for your work. It is wildly important and super valuable. And so thank you for, for what you're doing. Thank you for having me, Holly. And I appreciate you. I have just a little bit more to say. My big takeaway from Frank was that you can get through any hard time and you should actually start to welcome the darkness and change your relationship with adversity and pain. But the real takeaway is that you have to be willing to do the work. We can all get through it. We can all experience growth and transformation, but only if we're willing to truly do the work. And that is where the rubber meets the road because so often we want easy, we want comfortable, and we don't necessarily really want to go through the difficulty of putting in the work, having the dark times, overcoming the adversity, but that is truly when you're really going to find out you were made for more and you're really going to start to show up as the best version of yourself. And please like, subscribe, comment, 
And always, always remember, you were made for more. 